Unfortunately, not everything in food does the body good. In fact, not even everything that nature itself puts into food is good for the body. So far, everything I've classified as a killer in this series has in some way or another been the fault of people tampering with our food. Either we artificially practically created something harmful, or we overindulge in specific natural nutrients to the point that they are harmful. Today's topic is a little different, though, for two reasons. The first being that there is no healthy level of exposure to it. In general, the less the better. And the second is that these have always existed in food. Of course, man is still responsible for making it a lot worse than it originally was, but it would be a lot harder to pin down exact causes and points in history when it all went wrong. That being said, for the everyday individual, that's not what matters now. What matters is understanding the hand we've been dealt, knowing when to play, and knowing when to fold, and of course, why. So without further ado, let's expose another one of The Real Killers. Now, I think anyone with any sense will be able to tell you that too much exposure to Iron Maiden or Metallica is going to cause permanent brain damage. Hold on, I think I have the wrong script. So, anyone who's watched this channel for any period of time is going to know that the body handles some metals differently. Obviously, there's plenty of beneficial metals in the body, iron, copper, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and zinc, just to name a few. In fact, these are actually necessary and aren't harmful unless they're in the body in extreme amounts. No, the most common problematic metals that I'm talking about are mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic, as well as, to a lesser degree, nickel and aluminum, which are just not as prevalent. Mercury is probably the main culprit. It's the one you're most likely to encounter and is considered highly toxic. Lead is a very easily harmful contaminant that's also commonly found in tobacco smoke. Cadmium is most commonly a byproduct of processing zinc and is absorbed by the organic material in soil. And arsenic is technically not a metal, but a metalloid, however, it is still a common toxic compound. You can be exposed to these heavy metals in a number of ways, via air pollution, water pollution, improperly functioning containers, medicines, as well as several other environmental, often work-related hazards. But this video, as with the rest of the videos on this channel thus far, is going to focus on food. Heavy metals in food significantly increased during the Industrial Revolution and haven't slowed down nearly enough. Heavy metals are not naturally biodegradable or easy to get rid of, so once they're in the environment, they can last for decades, if not centuries. They get into food in a variety of ways. They're naturally in the environment, in water, air, soil, etc. They can be added through farming methods like pesticides. They can be exposed via processing or distribution of the food. They can creep in from certain containers or dishes. And some of them, especially mercury, have a habit of working their way up the food chain. It's also just a general rule that the more processed a food is, the more likely it is to contain heavy metals. Heavy metals are really only a concern at certain levels. As I said earlier, the majority of foods naturally contain some in extremely low, non-concerning amounts. How low, you ask? Well, they're usually measured in parts per million or even parts per billion. But in the rare instance that you would be overexposed, what would that look like? The main concern with heavy metals is toxicity. This occurs when the body's tissues absorb too much of a particular metal. In general, heavy metal toxicity is very rare in the states and slightly less rare outside of them, but it can be extremely harmful and potentially fatal if left unchecked. The usual guidelines for what's considered toxic depends on the metal. For mercury, it's 100 micrograms per liter. For lead, it's 400 per liter. For cadmium, 5 per liter. For arsenic, 70 per liter. And for aluminum, 100 per liter, but obviously, the are variable. Common symptoms of heavy metal toxicity include nausea, vomiting, chills, general weakness, abdominal discomfort, difficulty breathing, tingling, and in young people it may result in improper skeletal development, while in pregnant women it may increase the risk of birth complications. There's also more specific symptoms depending on the metal. For mercury, keep an eye out for poor coordination, muscle weakness, and sensory deprivation. For lead, anemia, sleep, and appetite issues. For cadmium, fever, muscle pain, and breathing issues, and for arsenic, cramps, swollen skin, and heart complications. If left untreated, any of these could lead to permanent brain damage, permanent kidney damage, circulatory failure, diabetes, or cancer. It's literally poisonous, everything goes wrong. As for how to know if you have heavy metal toxicity of some sort, it's usually tested with a blood test, but it can be expanded to test other parts of the body with urine, hair, or x-rays. When it's mild, it's treated by just cutting the heavy metals out, removing the exposure or consumption. But if it gets worse, it may require chelation therapy, medication to bind to the metals to flush it out. So let's take a look at what foods contain heavy metals to prevent this from happening. 
As previously stated, pretty much every food out there is going to contain some amount of heavy metal for one reason or another. But we do have quite a bit of data on which foods are more likely to be contaminated and which ones are virtually guaranteed to have amounts that you should be aware of. We'll start with the most infamous heavy metal in food, mercury. The overwhelming majority of seafood contains some mercury naturally, but contamination can and has made it far worse. An important thing to note here is that heavy metals accumulate and stack down the food chain. So in general, smaller seafood options contain far less per gram than larger carnivorous creatures. Mercury in seafood is measured in parts per million. Any food typically less than 0.15 parts per million is considered low in mercury, while those with more than 0.5 parts per million are considered high in mercury. Here is a list of low mercury fish and seafood with some important mentions being catfish, cod, salmon, sardines, tilapia, and trout, as well as pretty much all shellfish. Bear in mind that with all of these, it's still possible to accumulate high amounts if they are overconsumed or contaminated. Here are some moderate mercury fish, with the most important being bass, carp, halibut, snapper, and most tunas, including albacore, bluefin, and skipjack. But the real culprits you need to watch out for are the high mercury fish, being big eye tuna, drum, king mackerel, ling, marlin, orange ruffy, sharks, swordfish, and tilefish, as well as any other obscure large carnivorous fish. It's recommended that you eat these no more than once a week, otherwise you're just asking for trouble. Some other foods that may potentially contain mercury are factory meat and dairy and foods with corn syrup. The other one that's a consistent issue is arsenic, and this is mainly because of rice. Rice is susceptible due to irrigation requirements and it just naturally absorbing more compared to other crops. Arsenic is most prevalent in brown rice due to it mainly being in the bran and germ, which are removed in white rice. Arsenic in rice can be removed by washing and cooking, though, potentially up to 60%. However, the real solution is pretty simple just don't eat a ton of rice, and if you do eat a lot of rice, just mix in some white types like jasmine or basmati. Arsenic is also fairly common in rice-based products like cereals, crackers, syrups, and milk. Some other foods that may contain arsenic include some seafood, some mushrooms, and contaminated greens. The other heavy metals are not as concretely there, but they're still worth talking about. Lead is most commonly found in polluted fruits and veggies, especially root veggies, some seafood, and potentially dark chocolate. Cadmium is most commonly found in mushrooms, algae, shellfish, some freshwater fish, and contaminated veggies, grains, and dark chocolate. While nickel is only ever really found in contaminated grains, legumes, or soy, and aluminum in polluted baked goods, cereal grains, and processing-related additives, packages, and artificial colors. Fortunately, awareness of heavy metals in food is pretty prominent when compared to our other killers. Organizations like the FDA, USDA, and Environmental Protection Agency actively work to enforce that foods contain much lower heavy metal contents than what is considered harmful. Of course, to summarize, heavy metals are one of those things with no gray area, as little as possible is still best. Now, if you enjoyed this video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe, as I have plenty more of these on the way. I also encourage you to share this video with someone who you think might find it helpful. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other things you think deserve the title of real killer, and remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body you only get the one.